Vaya, señoras y señores. Welcome back. Bienvenidos, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Ebot, your host. And this is another episode of Toys in My Closet. And today I have in front of you and in front of me the brand new Diamond Select Castlevania action figures from the new Netflix series. And yes, these are characters that actually started in the games, like Symphony of the Night and other ones like Mirrors of Fate and I believe some of the ones that were on the Nintendo 3DS. I don't remember, or not 3DS, uh, SP. I don't remember which games, the names of the games exactly, but I believe that's also where they came from. So, we're going to start off with, obviously, I think it's Sophia or Sophia. Uh, she's the female character. And then we'll take a look at Trevor Belmont and Alucard. So, as you can see, they come in a really nice packaging. We'll move uh, Sophia Belnades or Belnaldes. Not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm pretty sure I am not. But if you can see the packaging right here in front of us, bam! As the Castlevania motif and font of the actual Netflix animated series. This is action figure there. Then you see a nice mo nice artwork inside the bubble blister on the cardboard in the back of the castle with the sun or the moon in blood red. Very simple. Kind of almost feels cheap to a certain extent, but I think it's because this is the new style of packaging the Diamond Select is choosing for some of the figures that are less uh, I guess uh, less prominent to have like background drops and stuff which I would think it would be cool if they would have done it with actual pieces like that you can build maybe a piece of the castle on the side with on top of the roof or a balcony I think it would be really nice but of course then you wouldn't be able to get them at the price point that they are in which is $20 Suggested retail price. So move it right along and right in. And unfortunately, because from the master, you know, the master uh, staction art, you know, work that they do, or, you know, the mastered scope that they do to the final release, she does not look this beautiful. She looks gorgeous there. That, that picture of her looks absolutely gorgeous. Also, keeping in mind that they're trying to keep it within the price point with the articulation and the kind of accessories and kind of cloth, rubber, plastic they use, you know, they sacrifice in certain areas. So, she doesn't look like that, but she doesn't look too bad. She just looks different, and I'll explain how I mean. What I mean by different. Castle Lady on the top. Safia Belnades. And it says there, Safia Belnades. Speaker, magician. Leaving behind her family of speakers. To A, Trevor Belmont. She finds herself drawn into battle. For the survivor survival of Europe or of Europa a region that was brought about doom upon itself by taking away the one thing its greatest monster loved this action figure of Sephia is based on her appearance in the TV series Castlevania on Netflix it features approximately 16 points of articulation and includes multiple accessories. Designed by Ayman O'Donoghue and sculpted by Richard Force. Also available, as you see here, cross promotional shop, Trevor Belmont, and obviously Alucard, Netflix seal of authentication, Refrigerator Studios, 
Diamonds and Legs, Comic Shop Locator Service. All this is, you know, the, the people involved with the product can bring it out. This is the UPC in case you may need it. And these you can find in your local, like, comic shops or hobby shops. And also in places like GameStop. That, you won't find these in no, you know, uh, Target or you won't find these at no Walmart. Unless they distribute them in the movie section. So, I've never seen them. So, you know, I have to assume that, that you won't find them there. <clears throat> so, also, we can take a look at our card in packaging, as you can see. Here is the here he is in packaging, looking very, looking very, looking very Alucard, as you can see. He has some nice paintwork. Same thing, back. Look at his face and see what it looks like. Seems to me that he is a better representation of what they went for from the packaging. I guess girls are a lot harder to scope. And it says there, Alucard, son of Dracula, woken from his long slumber when he is needed most. He finds himself drawn into a battle for the survival group of Europe, a region that has brought doom upon itself by taking away the one thing he greatly, the greatest monster love. This action figure of Alucard is based on his appearance. In, oh, it seems to repeat the same thing. 16 points. Okay. It's the same uh, bios. The, you know, the only difference is the top. So, last but certainly not least, we'll take a look at Trevor Belmont, right, in packaging. And he, brung, he brings a slew of weapons and hands, I think. But I keep seeing reviews on him right, where he has a defect or a, yeah, a, not a defect, a mistake that they did in the factory where they put the uh, weapons on the hands that were supposed to be the hands for his weapons that were supposed to be put like, they put like shurikens or something they put like like those little knives and it was a mistake um, so that's what he's supposed to look like I think it's out same thing based off the cross cell right and then it says Trevor Belmont last survivor of the house of Belmont and he embittered and in excommunicated and excommunicated he finds himself drawn into a battle for the survival of Europe a region has brought upon doom okay upon itself by taking away the one thing its greatest monster love so it's the same bios it's only a little bit different on the top explaining <coughs> <clears throat> where they came from. Excuse me about that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's take a closer look at Sophia or Sophia, and then we'll take a look at Alucard and Trevor out of packaging. And here's Sophia's weapons and accessories, or accessories, they're not really weapons. She brings a whole slew of half hands, like 10, if I'm not mistaken. First, we'll start off with these two hands left and right obviously and these are from these are supposed to be like uh, okay let's see let's do it this way they're supposed to be there we go it's supposed to be like positioned in like a martial arts type of stance as you see with the black and then the open part it's like a half glove and then the front part of the fingers show and display and they got these really long hinges but they all pretty smooth for the most part and you know not hard to put on I thought they would be at first when I saw them then I, I realized that you know they weren't too bad so if you're afraid of that, they're not too bad. It doesn't give you a hard time. 
Then she got the two, these two hands here, which are basically left and right with the symbol of the horns, you know, the rocking out symbols, rock and roll status. Really nicely sculpted, same thing. A second set of hands, that's four so far. Then she comes with these, which are, as you can see, really nicely done. This is her about to do her, her powers. And this one also about her, her about to do her powers with the horn symbol up with these nice little translucent effects on top of it. It looks like it's going to be the water, holy water, or lightning. I don't remember in the cartoon. I forgot. And they look really nice because they look like uh, they look translucent, but they also have like a, a a stain, like if they were icy looking. <coughs> icy. Looking. Then they have these right here, which are about ta -da! these right here. Let's see these. They have the one with her hands like this in the form that she's going to do something with the two fingers up. And then they have this open splayed hand. Now this has two of these. But me, opening it outside in my car and trying to fiddle with it. And because they're small, I lost them. The set of the open hand. So that was a dodo part head on me. So... She does bring two of those open splayed hands. Then she brings the open hand here. Boom, boom, boom. With the water effect or holy water effect, the lightning effect coming out. I think it's, a, it's holy water, which looks really nice in that translucent. With that, you know, uh, icy look on it as well. It looks really cool, the effect. And then she brings it on this hand as well. Where it's open, but she has like kind of, she makes kind of like a, a, a spear, it would look like. It looks like the form of a spear. If you can see what I mean. It looks like a spear, and this is a really nice, cool effect too. Or like an arrow, rather. Bow and arrow. She's going to shoot out spears, which is kind of cool. So. So that's what she brings. So now let's take care and look at her. Sophia or Sophia. And here we have Sophia or Safa, Saifa on uh, on the turntable in all her glories. She has a nice uh, robe over over her in a nice baby blue with whites, and then a black bottom skirt piece in black. The blondish hair and obviously her slippers from that time almost looking very ancient ancient time now see this is what her head face looks like on the figure nowhere near the indic is indicative of what it looked like in back of <coughs> the box now it looks much better in person but you can see what I'm talking about. And the reason why I guess they did this because maybe it was just harder to paint her face. Um, she she looks almost like she's a vampire possessed. So I don't know if she has vampire blood and that was what they were going for in the in the actual show and that's why they decided to go that route. Or if it's just a, 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 a issue of bad, of a bad paint, you know, face paint job sure but it doesn't look terrible you know it's okay but compared to the back I gotta be honest it's night and day so this part right here is really nice it's supposed to be you know a cloak and then you know a robe and it's all soft cut and I guess they did and you look know, underneath I guess they did it so you know it wouldn't hinder some of the articulation so the articulations on there you see the robe coming across to the sash and white coming across and tight and you have the skirt which does open and you can see she has uh, you know, a 
legs are bare underneath. It's attached there in that corner. Then she has a, I guess, a, what would be a black pair of panties with the boots coming down. So, you know, into what turns into obviously the straps with her, uh, what you call those, the uh, slippers. Yes. So, very nice. She's, the, the plastic on it is all soft. Soft, soft plastic. So, for the articulation, the head goes left, it goes right, it goes down a whole lot, and then it goes up, which is a little trickier, but it goes up a nice amount too. As you can see, it goes up that much. Then you bring it down, and she has tilt, tilt. You know, so a nice, uh, announce, a nice amount of range. Then in the shoulders, as you see here, I'll show it to you here because she has this piece. As you see here, soft too. She does have the shoulder that goes up. And it goes up about that much. It does go around in 180 degrees. It has a bicep swivel and then a single on on the elbow just to keep the, the the sculpting of the layout of her you know the sleeve uniform to not mess up the sculpt too much to look like this then she has the fisted hands she comes with which are hinged and do move out then in the bottom here she has a torso cut which does give you a nice amount of range she's able to you know Lean that much back or forward, and then she's able to lean that much back, as you can see. Then, believe it or not, if you look closely, she does have also a waist with it. So, something that <clears throat> you'll notice immediately is that Diamond Select is also implementing imp implementation of articulation has gotten. A lot better from what we used to from things in the past. In the past, they were very more statue-like, a lot of their figures. Even though they're still at the $20 price point. So, she does have the split ability there in between her legs. But because these are glued and pegged on on both sides, it's hard to do it. But you can still try to do her make her do splits. It's so, so. And then she has, obviously, the, as you see there, she has a swivel on the thigh. She does have a double, double knee that goes all the way up to her buttocks area. And then she does have the, oops, let me try that. She does have the, uh, the uh, going forward, going back, and then you know, left and right, and then she has obviously a rocker. A rocker, and it's nice and soft. Feels loose, but it's more soft than loose. Um, so yeah, and then oh, and she can bring her legs up only that much because her legs are attached to the skirt piece. So you push it, you'll, you'll get some more. And then back, I think it goes a, a little more, or a little better, rather. If you see, it's not too bad. She almost looks like she belongs next to the guy from the main character, I think it is, from Bleach, the anime, and from the, and the game the Sega did. Um, so, She's pretty cool. She don't bring a lot of, as far as accessories, but she's a really nice figure, all in all, overall. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put on her accessories so you guys can see what she looks like with some of the accessories. So something I wanted to point out here she is, real quick, uh, with these hands here display. And then this one with the fingers is that she also has um, 
the ability to to twist here on the single elbow and I believe it's the same thing on the leg uh, oh no no it doesn't I just want to point that out and that's what she looks like obviously with the piece here in her other hand now let's see the other let's see the other two pieces now here I was what I was trying to say maybe you guys don't see it but it looks like she could use this hand as an arrow coming out of her hand and then using the other piece like it's a bow arrow but if not then you know you could always display her like this is something that she's doing on this side obviously like so while looking this way right? and then turning her obviously like this and her casting a spell to a demon or a monster a monster right? like so and uh, making her look like in a different different position or have her like this you know kind of looking badass to me right there she's really cool I think she's dope um, she's really nice with the exception of the head that's really my gripe of the face sculpt rather the way it looked other than that I think she's really cool so now let's move on to our next figure and that should be uh, Trevor okay and here we have Trevor Belmont and all of his accessories and he comes with a bunch of accessories biggest problem being he doesn't really have nowhere to store them with the exception of the two whips that you see there he has the traditional uh, what you call it the traditional leather brown whip and then he has one with a wooden uh, handle with chains and made out of supposed to be out of metal with a spike piece in the end so I'll show you guys that really quick As you can see here it's nice saw soft and pliable and you can turn you know it's pretty long As you can see it's pretty pretty long pretty long here is the end of it really nicely painted <coughs> you can see there has a like type of marking there I don't know what it is with that nice silver going across even the illusion it's a metal chain see how long it is and then at the tip he has the you know diamond with you know the little spikes on it so he has that it comes with this nice bucket I guess to collect blood watch blood of the vampires they what you call it uh, execute <clears throat> here is a nice sheath with a sword it's a small sword and it does slide out in this case with some nice gold and brown as you can see with the gunmetal metallic gold looking in the corners and nowhere to host it then you have this really nice long one with another sword with the same type of design at the end but this one does not come out and it does have this here to kind of I guess so you can tie something around it or you can hold it and hold it on him by tying it but I don't know where I can't see it and it's longer then you have again a bunch of hands uh, this is the open hands like he's going to cast a spell even though that's not what he does then these are the relaxed hands there's just thing straight in relaxed form the left and right then he has the ones that came with the defect or error you see these are supposed to be your hold this whip and they have these little knives on them but you can rip them off 
which I did in this side, you see, to show you, and then, you know, you'll see that they're this big, the little knives that he throws. These are the ones that's supposed to look like he's throwing the knives because they have the tip holding evenly with both fingers. These are the throwing ones here. As you can see with the thumb. He has those two right there. With the little knives in gold and black. Then he has these with a bunch of little knives as well. In between each finger. That's the illusion obviously. Coming out in between each finger and it's molded like that as you can see. It looks pretty cool with the black and gold as well. So now we'll take a look at Mr. Trevor himself. And here he is in the turntable in all of his glory, looking really nice. Very recognizable when you see him, you know this is Trevor Belmont. And especially with the motif of the burgundies, with the browns, the grays, the beige, and the whites with the gold on his, you know, uh, little piece plate of armor which he has on him. So we'll take him off the turntable, get a closer look at his face. And there he is. You have the, they have that cartoony look from the animation. I kind of like it, but I kind of wish they were more realistic at the same time. So he has the scar there and the paint in blue. Hair nice and Nice and shiny black with the details. He has that soft look, the neck, collar, burgundy, the crest here in gold, the shoulder pad area with the gold and the blacks, some knives there and strapped on, the actual skirt piece over with the belt that looks on top of the sash, a holding point here, holding point here. He has the wrist, um, what you call it, the forearm uh, pad with the blacks, with the little white fur right next to the wrist. And the shirt, same thing on this side. Then on the back, in the straps, he has these two pouches strapped on. He has this really nice looking crest in the back. Painted pretty decent for the most part. But that gold, burgundy skirt, sash coming down to the bottom. The way it did with details in the wrinkle. The grayish pants in the area here. The nice details of wrinkles and stuff. The boots kind of fluffied up. Tied up there with the straps with the fur there on the top and then the bottom part of the boots in the back which is painted pretty well and pretty decent definitely uh, we know that he is Trevor Belmont so for his articulation he has the goes down a little bit like that goes up a little bit like that not too much he has the left and right, and then he has a little bit of tilt for attitude. Shoulders go up this much. Go all the way around in the 180 degree, obviously here. In this case, and I'm trying to turn it like so. Sorry. <laughs> he has the shoulder swivel and the bicep, rather. A single the elbow again I think to keep the continuity of the scope not to break it up too much and then in here as you'll notice he has the turn in 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 the you know in the uh, in the elbow area he has the turn in the wrist then he has obviously the of actual, um, you know, 
in and out uh, of the wrist. Then here he has the torso cut, he has the same ball torso cut, gives you movement. Um, he goes forward that much, which is not much. He goes back barely anything. I think because of the design of his sculpt, uh, it's a little bit more restricted. Then he does have he does have a waist swivel. Right there. It's tight, obviously. Um, fresh out of package. He does the splits this much and then. Not much, but about the same amount as the Marvel Legend. He has the thigh swivel up there. And if we fold this up, because this is kind of soft, so you can kind of fold it up. Don't be afraid to move around your figures, ladies and gentlemen. Because, you know, they're made to, to be played with, and some people get scared to move them around. Um, double double on the actual knee goes up that much then on here he has the boot cut on top as you can see and then in the front because of the design of the sculpt it goes up barely anything but it goes back this much it does left and right because of the boot cut and then it has the the rockers so articulation is not too bad. I mean, I don't know how well you can dynamically pose them. But it's not too bad um, as far as the articulation. It's just a matter of uh, fiddling with them, right? Obviously. So let me uh, put some accessories on them and see what it looks like. Be right back. Okay, guys, and look. Here we have Trevor Belmont with his weaponry and arsenal and I gotta be honest I like the figure a lot I like that he comes with some really cool accessories I like the look but I'm not having fun with it because it's really difficult putting the accessories in the holsters that are provided also it's very hard to try to figure out how to display them because as you see here there's nowhere to put the two long sword and shorter and shorter sword so I had to find a make my own concoction with rubber bands or elastic bands to hold it in place and it looks cool but I just me knowing personally that I used plastic elastic elastic bands really bothers me so here he is with the knife throwing in and I noticed I don't know if this was just mine but the other knife throwing hand that I showed you guys earlier nice that it focus see that one I don't know if this hand was supposed to be two right sides because he has two right sides as you can see right there. I thought it was supposed to be a left and a right. Then I thought maybe I, I ripped off the wrong ones which again are these right here. See? That I ripped off. But no, this is a left and this is a right, so that wasn't it. Which those are become those are the ones that are actually the hands for him to hold them. And just to show you guys that it is, here is the proof with the little two throne knives. Gonna focus, focus, focus. There you go. See the little, the little rippy that I ripped, and that's why you see that paint there because I ripped them off of it to prove to you guys that it was the ones that I ripped off. So now let me show you him with maybe the sword and also the throwing hands between the fingers, just so you guys can get an idea. 
And here he is with the, you know, two hands that have the three knives between the fingers. Like he can, he's going to throw them, you know, individually. Looks cool. But, again, I feel like this figure has way too many hand options when he already came with a way too many, you know, weapon options that you got to pick and choose kind of how you want to display them with what particular weapons. Now, I'm not saying that more options is good, but I feel like sometimes when it's too done way too much, it kind of can hurt the fun factor and displayability of the figure, especially in his case, because he doesn't have en enough holsters to host and hold all of his weapons since he comes with so many. So now I'll do one more. Uh, showing him with uh, just maybe perhaps the sword and and the other sheath in his hand. So here he goes with the other two splayed hands that actually hold, and here is the reason right there why I cut them off. So again, if you pose him up like this, he'll look really nice on the shelves. He looks nice. I just when you're playing with him, he doesn't feel fun because it's hard to to keep um, you know the weapons the way you want them, the posability the way you want them. He's very, very, very stubborn. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's the best way to put it. He's very stubborn. The lack of not having the proper holsters to house all his weapons. It's a big, big <clears throat> a nu nuisance, but the figure is very nice. It's not a bad figure. Um, just something that maybe Diamond could look in the future that if they have figures with a lot of weapons, just make sure you give them places and to hold, be able to house them in and so they can look nice and really stand out and feel more formidable, I guess, if... They, you know, if you can, you know, have them in a nice secure place. So now let's go take a look at Mr. Alucard. So here we have, last but certainly not least, Alucard. And he is probably going to be the most popular or the most sought off character in this first wave of the Castlevania Netflix series line and you know Alcar has very familiar look he looks very much the way he did in Symphony of the Night the you know Castlevania game for the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation 1 from that era <coughs> with the exception of some <coughs> excuse me some minor little differences here and there but he's a very elegant elegant looking character he has the androgynous kind of look, with the hair very long and, flu and flowing and fluid. He has the dark, deep black jacket. And we'll bring him closer. And turn on the light on him. Dark, deep, like I said here, black jacket, really nice gold trims around his collar as you see going down the seam of the jacket all the way down to the black trench in a nice mat with a nice soft rubber feet you know texture um, one of the things that I said is really nice about these diamond select figures from previous ones and Marvel select stuff that I've bought in the past is that they feel really really soft the rubber comparison to those in the past so it feels more quality and it feels more uh, it has it gives it more of a play a play value to it where you can pose it and play with it and uh, do more with the characters because of that plastic being so soft you see his uh, shoulders he has those little daggers or stakes in his uh, uh, you know his uh, forearm 
forearm bracelet. That side too. The detail of the pin where you button up the jacket. His hair is really nice and detailed with a soft yellow. For that blonde look, his collar looks really nice with a metallic gold and then his face is very well done. More representative of what it looked like in the back of the box. In the promotional shots, of course. And nice focus. His t shirt with the v neck cut opened up at the top with those straps of leather black. Um, what well, looks to be belts in the middle of his waist. And then obviously the pants in black going straight down with his boots looking really nice with the straps on his boots in gold with a nice little sheen to them looking a little bit more uh, glossy because they're boots and then the boots itself so he's uh, really nicely executed in my opinion a really nice figure uh, the way he looked and all I think they did a great job um, with him. So, you know, I don't think uh, he's something that uh, people will be disappointed with, to be honest. As a matter of fact, let's get a measurement on him really fast. We'll put him up here really fast. And then, if I can find my magic ruler really fast. Ruler, ruler, where are you? Give me one second right back. Alright, we're going to be able to measure him. Here's my ruler. And we'll measure him from here to top to. So if you see up here, he's about a little over seven and a half inches. So over seven and a half inches, which makes sense because Alucard is the son of Dracula. He's an hybrid of a human and the son of Dracula, obviously. Uh, and he should be very tall and majestic and all that other good stuff. So, now we'll look at his accessorios. So here we have Alucard with all his accessories. And I don't know why, but he brings literally six pairs or six sets of hands. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve hands, individuals, and six sets of pairs of hands. He brings an extra portrait which is uh, different from the other two and he brings two weapons. One sword in the sheath which the sword does remove from the sheath and then the sword from uh, with I think the powers where it starts to run through the sword which looks to be again either <clears throat> either it's supposed to be blue fire which I'll show you guys here Bring it right over here. There it is. There's the handle with the name here inside. Looking really dope. And then it has this nice blue translucent that looks almost. If I want to say blue fire, that's what it looks like. Because I know it's not water. It's the sword possessed with power. And it looks like blue flame. It looks really dope. Really nice. <clears throat> then he has the sheath. With the other sword in it as well. With that gray silver in the handle. And then the gray silver on the top of the sheath with these things popping out of it on the side. Nice matte black in length obviously and then the tip same thing that nice silver and to show you guys that the sword does remove and it's nice and thin and here we go also in that nice you know color as well
There you go, see? The silver. The silver gray so we put this right in the sheath again. <clears throat> then he has these hands here. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna grab them from the bottom. They have a long peg, so it's kind of scary. It feels like you could break them, but they really um, are not that flimsy. With the, with the, and he has where well, he has these open where he's about to looks like we're about to create some type of power to you know throw at someone. Then he has these clothes hands where you can hold something. Gripping hands but closed, which I feel he has two of them as a matter of fact and you see this is all like a nice jet black color then he has these that look like he's either about to clap if you put them together close by to each other if you see you get like that illusion like they're gonna clap or like is he's just doing it just to like being arrogant like ha oh, ha you know some type of thing like that I don't know like semi open with doing je a gesture. Then again, the, the other set of hands he has is another set of clothes, even though these look more shiny. So I don't know if these are supposed to have with gloves that are shiny and the other ones look more matte. It's weird. But it's also closed hands. Or he brings two extra clothes hands. I don't know. He's the only one that brought the left and right of all hands. Then he has these, which is another kind of open hand in hand as well. Like saying, wait, hold on, type deal. That's what they look like. And then he has also, remember, these two close fisted ones on him. Then we bring in his other portrait. And you see that he has an open mouth with the vampire teeth showing with a more angry, stern look. Again, with that soft yellow all around. This looks like a little discrepancy in my. What you call it in my uh, paint job, but yeah, nonetheless, looks really dope, really nice, like that. So, I'm gonna change it up. So, now what we'll do is I'll put the accessories on him so we can take a look at what he looks like with the accessories on. And here's our card with his accessories, as you can see. I put the sheath inside that belt thing strap they had in the middle and the sword on one side with the flames and then the other sword on the other side and to show you guys I change the portrait of his face so I have him with this portrait instead there you go with the kind of stern look that angry look so he looks really cool really good so one thing I'm gonna do because I didn't I didn't um do it before is we're gonna go over his articulation really fast and I think out of all of them his articulation is probably the most um, flexible for lack of a better term or accessible all right so for articulation, obviously we got his head over here that goes left and right. It goes down this much and it goes up that much even though this hinders it. But since it's soft it can go up somewhat and he has the tilt for attitude on both ways. 
tonight. So it's like on a ball peg, and, it, and it's pretty, pretty nice in range and movement. Shoulders go up like this, like so, 180 degrees, bicep swivel, single on the joint, on the elbows. Again, I think to keep the sculpting integrity and continuity, hinge on the wrist and spin, rotation. Then we have the torso area here with the torso jam, you know, the torso cut which goes around and around. I think you can actually tilt them a little bit that way and then you can tilt them a little bit that way, if you can see. Then you can go forward. You can go forward that much. And you can go backwards just a tad because of the jacket. And he also has, you know, the waist. It was a little hard, but he has it there. It's there. It's definitely there. Waist, waist. Will. And he has the T cuts the way that DC Classics used to have, where they look like a T cut. And so it goes up all the way, like a split, like so. Like the Van Dan split. Not that you'll do it with him because he's more of an elegant moving character. It goes up, not too much, just that much. And it goes back almost non-existent has the thigh swivel there on the top he has the double double on the knee it goes up even though the jacket's there doesn't really doesn't really hinder it it goes almost all the way up on the boot cut he has his turn there then it goes forward this much backwards that much left and right because of the boot cut and then definitely has you know the forward pin rockers as you can see and then in the elbow area here he has the spin on the elbow also just like the other one so they all have the pretty much the same uh, points of articulation and cuts in the same areas so you know uh, just to keep you guys keep that in mind. And what I'll do here last, uh, also, is uh, I'll put them all together in 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 uh, one shot, so you have an idea of what they look like, what they will look might look like on your shelf once you have them posed and splayed out on your display. So, um, real quick, I'm gonna put them here. I'm gonna put it here, and uh, and for comparison. For a comparison of size, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in for size comparison. I'm going to bring in the 80th anniversary Marvel Legends, right? Marvel Legends, Captain America. Yeah. And yes, I know you guys are like Captain America, Marvel Legend. You could like Marvel Legend, you never review them. And I would say yes, you're absolutely right. I don't review them because so everybody in the world on YouTube that's a figure enthusiast reviews Marvel Legends. Uh, it's oversaturated and I really don't want to review the same thing. Look at the disparity in height. <laughs> Cap look like a midget right next to Alucard. It's, it's funny. So, but at least to give you an idea of what he looks like, you know? So, give me one sec. I'll be right back, you guys, with my final thoughts and shot and review or final thoughts of the review. And here we are with the absolute Netflix poster money shot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the brand new Diamond Select 
Castlevania 7 inch scale figures from the new Netflix Castlevania animated series. Trevor Belmont, Alucard, and Sophia Belnadas, Belnadas, Belnades, something like that. Sorry, didn't mean to masterize the pronunciation, but they're really nice looking. They have nice plastic, really nice detail, even though they have more of, a, of the animation type look instead of more stylized realistic. But they're very familiar at the same time, especially for Castlevania enthusiasts and Castlevania um, people that are actual fans of the games. So for me, like I said, it's a treat because I am very familiar with them, not only because of the game, but also because of the um, animation now as well. Um, so I'm hoping that they continue to make more because they are nice and maybe of other properties as they go along would be nice as well and it's also really nice because this is based on video game and my game channel is also video game centric and related so it's nice to do reviews on figures from time to time or at least a lot of times that also have to do with video games so there you have it guys that's my review and thoughts and unboxings on the figure uh, let me know what you think in the comments below I'll be interested to know if you think that you like them, if you didn't like them, if you plan on picking them up, if you already did, and if you did, what do you think of them yourself? And always, uh, you know, like I said, leave a thumbs up if you liked it, leave a thumbs down if you disliked it. Share it with someone you think might enjoy the video and review. And like always, if you're new to my channel, welcome and thank you for stopping by. And if you subscribe, I'm really appreciative because I know you don't have to and if you did not only does it mean the world to me but I consider you guys now part of my family so if you ever want to help me out in any way shape or form in my fat and with my channel the future to help me get grow and get better content for the future as always in the description below I have my patreon and I have my PayPal account you can do what you like if you choose to right there uh, you know and follow the instructions I guess so if you want to follow me on Twitter Facebook or on Instagram you can because I'm there and all those social media I'm C respect on Twitter and I'm he bought I mean I'm he bought on Twitter and on Instagram I'm C respect uh, and Facebook the same thing he bought so guys there you have it this is your host he bought signing off this is another episode of Toys in My Closet. Hope you enjoyed it. Love you guys very much. Happy hunting. Good luck checking these guys out and find them. And, you know, I hope and wish you guys lots of luck. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.